Hello YouTube, you in the bedroom here. You can tell a junkie with this. The strings are roached on this guitar. I just want to let you know. So, you know the deal. today this is like i don't even know how many takes this was hope i remember not to do hashtag one take beanie for this one it might just be there out of habit but um yeah i've been trying everything i could to play this guitar and the first thing is that my brain is not controlling my fingers I hear one thing in my head <clears throat> and that's how I always play and it's just the hand is not working with the brain it's saying <laughs> not today pal so what I had to do is this is my very first original old strap that I've had it I've got I've got bean written on here and I've got my uh signature um uh, yin yang from when I used to train people in martial arts <clears throat> I had to replace the old brown suede leather strap because this was so worn out that if I'm moving or going to lean down for the pedal board it was popping off and it's just like everything is just irritating me today it could just be me so I had to take my this strap off of my other black strap i like it wide this is like a cloth material it's not leather it's nice and soft especially with a heavy guitar you want a wide wrap uh strap let's slow down because i get pissed off at myself when i i hear myself back on the i on the video i'm like oh man you sound like such a new yorker because i am so yeah um these are the best straps they don't even make them anymore um i had told all my friends about these especially with the ones with gibson guitars that are like 10 pounds so i took the strap off of that one because it was barely used i used strap locks on here you could see the rings where the washes were 
and I measured it out. And if I go to the first hole, it's exactly the, the, the length of the brown one. Um, but with this SG style, the button is not up here where the horn is. It's, it's on the body. And this one is actually on the body where it should be. It's not behind the neck like my Harley Benton. But because of that, it brings the guitar up higher from where it would hang. So I was, it was like up here. And I was like looking right at the neck. And it, this guitar is just all neck. And I was like, I was all over the place. Almost like my gems that have all the vines of life going up and down. Uh, it was, you know, just too much. I need it. <laughs> And I need it right here, pretty much. So I had to play with that. Then the hole was too long. So I had to drill another one in the middle. Then I had to take a razor knife and I had to cut the little teardrop so you could fit it on there. You know, kind of thing. So I got that out of the way. I just got this um, today and I'm playing it, which I normally don't do. I just... I had to clean it first because it was, it had, I don't know what, it looked like someone was eating something and sneezed all over it. Because there was like, I, I'm telling you, I had to use Goo Gone to get it off. And then I had to use my um, Lemon Pledge to wax it. Same thing with the back. So, um... You know, I had to clean this up and use Goo Gone, especially up here. They had stickers that they had removed. I don't know why. But I think my rant is over. <laughs> let me let me get to the guitar. So I'm not sure what year this is. From what I could recall from other guitars, I'm guessing it's either a 2015. It's either a 2000. 2013 or 2015 you know so like I said if I didn't already mention it is a Epiphone custom shop SG 1966 G 400 natural it's all natural mahogany so there's your headstock SG on the um, cover for the truss rod. Three bolts, three screws, I should say. Um, I'm not sure if all get, uh, Gibson SGs are like that. I think just the Gibson Les Pauls have the, um, the two screws. But, <clears throat> so this thing here has, it looks like a graphite nut. I'm not sure if it was sold this way, but if someone replaced it, they did a pretty good job. It looks good. So 22 um, nickel medium jumbo frets that are pretty decent. They're a little low, but you know, they've got a little meat to them. I just wish they had more. Um, in my opinion, but fantastic guitar, nevertheless, oh, of course. So it's got, that's the back. It's got the real deal, proper Grover tuners. Barely see because it's in gold on a natural back, but that's where it says Epiphone Custom Shop. You could see the layers of wood on here. It's on the headstock around here. You could see that. Right, same thing there. The headstock is glued to the neck. The neck is one piece mahogany until you get to the heel. And then of course, there's your spacer, right? And the back is, I don't know how many pieces, one, two, three. Three pieces of wood. There's a seam here. There's a seam here. There's another seam here. 
like where this is attached to it, you can see the difference in the wood grain too. Well. It's a little bit darker. Same thing in the front. <laughs> you can see it right there where it's added on and the same thing on the bottom right there. So yeah, I got this today and it's got a bit of a beefy neck to it. It's thin up here, but it thickens out. It's not a baseball bat by all means. Um, it's way thinner than the Zach Weil guitar that I had. So, you know, it's pretty decent. The wood grain looks really nice. What attracted me to it was the way it looked. I never saw an SG with natural wood grain before. And you've got your 1960 reflector knobs on there. Um, no pins for the volume and, and, uh, and tone. Three-way selector, which it's already on that angle. All I had to do was tune it. I didn't have to set this thing up. I didn't have to touch the neck. Um, I tuned it up, and I just started playing it. And when I tuned it up, I checked the uh, I checked the frets. All the frets are fine. Nice. This is a beautiful fret job on this neck. No buzzing anywhere. Um, the uh, when I'm going from here, which is important, E to F. It's going up a half a step, like it should. So that's good for the nut, because you don't want to go from an E to an F sharp. Uh, you want to go to from E to F, from what I recall. A to A sharp. You get the gist of it. <laughs> so, um, standard tailpiece on here, your uh, uh, um, adjustable bridge. The intonation was spot on too, which I'm, I mean, right, perfect. So again, with these here, it's just like I said, it's a block of wood, you know, that got strings on it. It's fantastic. So because I'm not sure this model, I, I, I had a hard time looking up the pickups. I saw one or two videos where someone was playing the, um, SG-1960 G400. I keep on looking at the paper. And I think it was, I think they were red. But from what I recall, they really didn't tell you what kind of pickups are in here. They're probably pro buckers, burst buckers, mother truckers, uh, like in all of them. They sound good. <clears throat> They're bitey. The uh, bridge pickup is it's pretty far up there, but it's, it's set up nice. They balance out well. Um, going to the back, you can see how the neck is got the clear coat, and it also goes over the the um, fingerboard, which is cool. So, <clears throat> pleasantly surprised on this one, ladies and gentlemen, a shielded cover. But wait, there's more shielded cavity but wait there's more hand soldered 500k pots for the tone and volume this is all hand wired no quick clip release vs going on in here i don't mind telling you so very impressed with that i think actually the holly benton i think is a little bit heavier than this so, um, yeah, the, uh, I'm going to have to play it a little bit more. I could deal with the neck because like I said, it's way better than my Zach Wild guitar, but it is, this is probably the one guitar that I have that has the beefiest, fattest neck on it. That, that is pretty fat right there coming down up here is great. Again, the neck on the Holly Benton is way thinner. But, you know, this is an Epiphone, and Epiphone Custom Shop, which I never heard of before. When I saw that, I was like, what's that all about? And then, yeah, they were looking it up. 
And uh, people, were, I was looking it up, not they were looking it up. <laughs> I can't even speak right today. But all in all, yeah, the, um, the guitar is excellent. The fingerboard is, it, it almost, you know, it's flat as can be. It's got, if anything, you know, it's got a little bit of that, just a little bit. But let me tell you. It's right there. This is the sound of it unplugged. Yeah. So I'll do a comparison video with this Epiphone Custom Shop SG to my Holly Benton double cut 580 SG. The only difference really between the two is that that one has a uh, Duesenberg tremolo system on it. And locking tune is roller bridge in classic pickups. <laughs> and it's red. And it's got 24 frets. So, hey, thanks for watching. Um, yeah. Not 100% sure about this. It, it looks great, other than the fact that it's pieced together, which I expect with every Epiphone that I've ever had. Unless you get like an older one from the 70s. I don't think they would be slapped together like these are. But, you know, everything works. The finger, the fingerboard is, is great. And the pickups sound really good. And the functionality of it is, is sweet. It's just, you know, am I going to play this all the time? Because my Holly Benton, I had like under the bench in the case for like three or four months. Oh, which, by the way, this came with a hard shell case. Let me just flip the camera around to show you. It's right there. Yeah. Yep. So, <clears throat> thanks for watching, everyone. Had a good day. Have a good day. Yeah, had a good day. Man, My see, my brain's not even controlling my mouth, let alone my fingers. I can't speak. I can't play. Ugh. It's tough being me. Have a good day. Better tomorrow.